Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. A very warm welcome to St. Michael's Church, Castle Caulfield, to this midweek reflection. Our series on the Canticles continues tonight with another of the evening Canticles, Nunc Dimittis. Before we look at that text, we sing our opening hymn from Thanks and Praise number 103, My Life Flows On in Endless Song. eternal truths. First is Jesus is a light to lighten the Gentiles. Simeon, of course, is talking in the temple in Jerusalem, and the very structure of that great building speaks of division. The outer court is the court of the Gentiles, beyond which no Gentile may pass. Gentiles are regarded as unclean, impure, beyond salvation. They did not know Jehovah. They lived in spiritual darkness. Jews, on the other hand, were the children of Israel, God's holy nation, the chosen ones. And yet, the covenant between God and Abraham was not to establish a holy nation as distinct from an unholy world, but to establish a holy nation to be a blessing to an unholy world. That covenant finds its fulfillment in the child acclaimed by Simeon as a light to lighten the Gentiles. Or in other translations, a light to reveal you to the nations. In Jesus, we see the full revelation of God, the invisible made visible, the intangible made tangible. In his voice, we hear the voice of God himself speak. In his miracles, we see the hand of God himself acting. In his death, we see the love of God himself made manifest. And in his resurrection, the power of God himself over all things. In the great prologue to John's Gospel, Jesus is described by John as the light that shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. That metaphor which describes Jesus as light must surely be one of the most powerful metaphors in Scripture. Light encourages, light dispels fear, light guides us in safe paths and shows us imminent dangers. Light is associated with all that is good. From the very beginning of creation, when God created light, 
to dispel the darkness. Simeon not only describes Jesus as a light to lighten the Gentiles, but also as a glory of your people, Israel. The incarnation did not happen to begin a new church, a new religious movement. It was a culmination of centuries of watching and waiting of prophecy and prayer. The children of Israel had long looked forward with expectation and yearning to the coming of the Messiah, the anointed one, the son of David, who would be the liberator of the people and the restorer of the Jewish nation. In this child, Simeon recognizes the fulfillment of all that is yet to come. The fulfillment of all that the Hebrew scriptures have pointed towards. And so he can proclaim with confidence that this baby is the glory of God's chosen people, Israel. And so he can begin with great confidence, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. Thy word has been fulfilled. There is a peace, a peace which surpasses all human knowledge and understanding that can be found only in surrendering to God and entrusting every aspect of our lives to him. When we come to him in faith and trust, he plants that seed of peace in our hearts. And as we grow daily in his image and likeness, that seed grows to bud and flower. We've just sung those wonderful words, no storm can shake my inmost calm, while to that rock I'm clinging. That peace of God is perhaps his greatest gift to us, one which is most highly sought after, yet rarely found in this world. People take so many paths on that quest for spiritual peace, but only one leads to true and lasting peace. And it's that sense of peace which allows Simeon to say, Thy word has been fulfilled. All throughout his life, Simeon has trusted in God. He has known the faithfulness of God. And now in a final act of trust, he affirms that eternal faithfulness of God to each and every promise and covenant that he has made. Though we forget God, God is always faithful to us. At times it might seem like it will never happen. But God is faithful and fulfills his word and his promise in his own good time. And to come full circle, it is that faithfulness of God which is the bedrock on which our peace rests. The Holy Spirit has revealed to Simeon that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord's Messiah. God was faithful to his promise, and so Simeon can leave the temple filled with the peace of God, ready to enter into God's nearer presence, in the full assurance that all that God had promised was indeed being fulfilled. We know not what happened to Simeon, how long he lived, or when he met his maker. We can perhaps, maybe slightly romantically, picture him winding his way home through the streets of Jerusalem that day, content, peaceful prepared and ready to die. There is a wonderful sense of joy to be like Simeon, to be able to say with confidence that our end draws near, Lord, now let us thou thy servant depart in peace. Thy word has been fulfilled. Death, when it comes, can be a frightening prospect to the heart that is unprepared. Many will do all that they can to avoid that day. But to the faithful Christian, death is nothing to fear. It's simply the gateway into our Father's year of presence. The finishing of the race, the receiving of the crown of life. It is the moment of glory as we stand before the throne of grace and receive the mercy and the love of God.
Let us pray. Lord, we long for the assurance of Simeon, the trust that allows us to depart this life in peace, unafraid of standing before you. May we live each day of life in the light of your glory revealed to the Gentiles. May we walk each day in the way of your statutes and in the path of your word. May we know each day the full assurance of our sins forgiven and our lives renewed, that when we make that final journey, we do so in peace and in assurance, confident of your mercy and grace through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our final hymn reflects on the encounter between the child Jesus and Simeon. Hymn number 193, in his temple now behold him, see the long expected Lord. gracious mercy and protection we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.